It's so good to be here back in Portland where I'm from. Just thank you. Just a beautiful sea of white people. Oh, it's amazing. Milky. Mm. The land of milk and more milk. That's what Portland is. And also I don't want to get this off to uh, sort of on the wrong foot, but I'm just no, going to tell you that... No, we're doing great. We're doing great. Some of the science in this book seems pretty questionable. I'm curious about your background. Um, sounds like something a man would say. So um, uh, and thanks for just Touché. taking me down. Uh, now, as you explained, I did want to put science in terms that our little brains can understand. Um, most science textbooks are just way too complicated for a woman, and most science textbook covers are way too heavy for a woman tiny little hands. Uh, so I wrote a book that is pint-sized. Um, it's Mrs. Size. It's cute. It's like size zero or two. Um, it doesn't... No plus sizes. That's what I want to say for this book. Um, no plus sizes. Um, let's get into some of the details. Like, for instance, when you explain the sexiest molecules. Oh, my God. I'd love to. Um, molecule. I didn't know any of this. I want to start by saying I'm just like you guys. I'm basically an idiot so I really was learning this and my brain is so small that sometimes I'd learn facts about science and then I'd forget my name or my address so uh, I really am it really just pushes it right off the edge I of the no shelf no idea where I am yeah uh, I learned some science to answer this question and then I have no idea where I am so sexiest molecules if you look at them under a microscope which is a thing um, you can see that some Molecules actually look like sexy ladies. So, like, water, H2O, um, actually looks like a lady with just her legs splayed in yoga pants. Uh, so, I found that to be very scientific. All right. Uh, how about the process of actually making a biological clock out of a potato, which is a big part of this book. It's so fun. I like to bring science experiments that maybe you did in middle school into a lady level. So um, you may have made a potato clock, uh, but I made it so you could figure out when that all-encompassing urge to have children is going to explode within you, which is a biological clock. Um, and it might happen when you're 16, or it might happen when you're 41, in which case, old maid, bye-bye. Um, <laughs> but biological clocks are very um, hard and important to understand. Yeah, but I mean, physically, how does the potato factor into it? I'm still confused. Oh, well, you put wires and stuff. The, the step in the uh, instructions is actually, it's like step nine, have your husband Google how to build a potato clock and oh, then okay, have him yeah. do it for that makes you. Sense. So I'm sorry to skirt the subject. I actually don't know. Um, okay. But the That fun seems to be a recurring theme in the I'm not science afraid of this to book, admit Megan. It. I'm emotionally and physically naked. For all of you listening, I'm naked. Yes. Uh, Ooh, they agree. They all agree. Uh, I think naked for public radio is like you only have three Patagonia fleeces that's on. That's what, that's. That's public radio nudity. No, th that's what NPR stands for. Yeah. It's naked for public radio. That's right. It's beautiful. Uh, uh, another uh, thing that I was, I, I'll just say, surprised to read about was the portion where you talked about viruses versus bacteria versus ex-boyfriends. Yes. So <laughs> didn't seem super connected to me. Well, um, I just go into great detail about how um, there are some similarities, like uh, viruses are not even organisms like ex-boyfriends, um, but also some bacteria can cause uh, sexually transmitted diseases like ex-boyfriends. Uh, so there's actually a lot of Venn diagram-based interchange. Mm -hmm. um, I just forgot my social security number trying to remember that, so... <laughs> Is it four? <laughs> did, you, did you write this entire book in like an Annie's pretzels in the mall in Pasadena <laughs> in an afternoon? I had so much skinny girl Marg, just <laughs> brought it to Annie's, my babe Anne, and just uh, really went wild. <laughs> so, Are you worried uh, that, and this is, uh, whether you'll admit it or not, I pray to God this book is a satire. 
Spoiler alert. Are you worried? <laughs> are you worried that there are people in the reading public who are going to get their hands on this book, Science for Her, and they'll read a line like, if a guy drinks red wine, he's gay, and they'll believe it? I mean, if he's buying a science for her, he's probably gay. So I will say I'm not worried about that specific line. Um, I am so excited when people think it's a real book, which has happened a lot on the internet. <laughs> Because I'm a little rascal. <laughs> this is Livewire Radio. We're talking to Megan Amram. Her new book is Science for Her. Megan Amram, the pride of Portland, Oregon. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So is this mostly like things that people are saying on Twitter where they're they're... They're just taking something very literally in the book and then getting super pissed at you yes, about it? Yes, mostly people have just seen the cover, which is a hardcore Cosmo cover with me in a very sexy lab coat um, mixing something together. Uh, and a lot of people on Twitter and Tumblr um, who are actually scientists are like, this is so bad, this is objectifying women and setting people back years, and I kind of want to be like, we're on the same team, don't worry. Uh, but Are you I, not able to do that because you have to kind of keep the bit going? Oh, I, the bit is all I have. It's, <laughs> I'm so desperately committed to the bit, so. I just watched How far from would you go with the bit? Would you so consider far. living the rest of your life so, in the bit? Was, yes, and I've already thought about this. Um, I think that the perfect uh, next step would be to write science for her for him, which is just a completely straight science textbook. Just <laughs> no jokes. Like, I go back to grad school and learn how to write a science textbook for high school. I write it for years, put it out, and then, boom, that's the bit. Just God. done. I would respect you so, so much if I you're willing to put in that time. That would be myself. one of the greatest, greatest bits of all Thank time. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone can write me a letter of recommendation <laughs> for a textbook school. <laughs> I have a lot to learn. First of all, what that school is. Yeah, called. textbook you. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible, terrible place. You just go to learn how to write textbooks. That sounds like something they have in like North Korea, like a fake <laughs> version of everything. They force a hundred thousand people to show up in the courtyard and dance at textbook you yeah. once a year. Yes, that's my understanding of textbook uh, you. You are a person who is followed on Twitter by a lot of other people. I think it's around almost half a million people now. Yes. Uh, it, was that a surprise to you that 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 your your tweeting was was so is so wildly popular? Yeah, it's crazy. I, all I tweet about is what I have for lunch. For those of you who don't follow me, just every single day sandwich. Um, no, I tweet. <laughs> I tweet jokes, um, and it has been a crazy ride, sir, because I, uh, about four years ago, just started writing jokes to make my friends laugh and to practice writing to hopefully get a job doing that, uh, and had no idea that you could reach other people on the internet. I, I thought the internet was an intimate, person-to-person mm -hmm. uh, -person based tool. <laughs> Didn't realize you could reach strangers, so it So it's not just science that you don't understand, it sounds <laughs> like. There's a wide variety of topics mm -hmm. you know very little about. This is a cry for help. <laughs> this is a cry for help. Um, no, I, I had no idea that strangers want to hear what other strangers are saying. Um, so it's been really amazing that so many people follow me. I, I hope that the, the folks listening out there in Radio Land and even the people here in the Alberta Rose Theater uh, will take a moment at some point in your day to go to Megan's Twitter feed and look at her profile picture, which is horrifying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's also, as somebody just said, the best. Uh, how yeah. would you describe your Twitter uh, profile picture, Megan Amram? Um, well, I've said before that it looks to me like Jabba the Hutt on his quinceañera, because <laughs> I'm... Make... I saw that my super sweet 16. <laughs> yeah. He was amazing. Uh, yes. <laughs> I uh, am making a lot of chins, really squishy face, but I also have makeup like up to my forehead. I have like eyeshadow up to here. Um, so it's very perplexing. I think that there's a real narrative there. <laughs> it's, 
it's it's deeply unflattering and <laughs> what I wonder about that is is like I mean you you are a person who's probably not completely motivated by vanity as no, remember by I'm this naked picture. all right. you listening right. I'm naked right now yeah it's like that Alanis Morissette video <laughs> um, but here's my question I mean do you feel like you need to get enough pictures of you looking normal out into the world digitally no. to do a little bit of Counter programming so to that sad. profile picture. It was so sad to me when I had to put any other pictures on the internet for real. All I want for a long time, the only picture you could see of me was this crazy face that didn't even really look like me, hopefully. And uh, are you that secure in yourself that you are fine with most of the world thinking that that is what you look like? Um, maybe it's that I'm so insecure that that's what I look like to me. Why would you ask me that? Uh, no, I think it's funny. It's like, it's like a lot of people have asked me about this picture, which I enjoy thinking that I put so much time and effort into cultivating my um, brand online. But really, I was like, uh, that's a funny picture. I'll change it later. And then just never did for <laughs> years. <laughs> Uh, so you are uh, writing on Parks and Recreation? Yes. Is that uh, like a, just a riff fest writing for a network sitcom, particularly a very funny one? Or is it like a grind and on day one you learn that trying to write funny stuff is not itself a fun, funny process? Oh, no, riff fest, man. Riff fest. Total riff fest. Um, I'm going to go back to work and say, I, we, I have a new thing to call us, riff fest. <laughs> um, it is so much fun. There are... 10 of us right now uh, in the writer's room and it truly is filled with the funniest people I've ever met. So it holds you to a very high standard of comedy, um, less about uh, making stupid faces and more about high wit, um, but it, everyone at my show is super nice and super thoughtful about issues going on in the world, which um, to have a somewhat serious answer is I think our show is very feminist and it's really cool to work on a show like that. Shut up! Um, be women speak when spoken to. Um, and but, hoot, never. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it, it is really awesome and I think informed how I wrote this book, which I think is a feminist science comedy textbook. You know, that old chestnut. Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your mom... Uh, presented you at your uh, Powell's reading last yes. night, I understand. And is your mom here? She's tonight? not here. She's asleep. Wow. Okay. She has to. She has to work tomorrow. Um, but does she have a paper route? How early does she have to be up? <laughs> I feel like she could have made it. Yeah. Well, like all women, she's very bad at driving, so she has to ride a little bike around right. with a Got little. Um, well, I was no, asking. No, we I, won't slut shame her. I, <laughs> That's what that means. I was asking because this book uh, is very funny, but also very dirty. And I'm wondering yes. what her take on uh, the book is. She loved it. Like, sincerely, she loved it. I was less afraid of the dirty stuff, because uh, I knew she'd like that. Uh, but more afraid that she just like wouldn't think it was funny. Um, and she thought it was great. And I knew she'd tell me if she didn't. Because every time I tweet, She'll usually say, oh, I love that. That was funny. Or she'll say, mm, didn't think that was that funny. But based on the retweets you got, the young people liked it. So <laughs> she's very, she might know more about the internet than I do. So, um, but she was great at Powell's. She was very nervous. Uh, someone asked her what she contributed to my book. And I said that she has great boobs. And it made me uh, understand the importance of your body and just showing it off. So I think she liked that. <laughs> Megan Amram, ladies and gentlemen, right here on Livewire. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Live Wire Radio from PRI. I'm your host, Luke Burbank. We've got Megan Amram here. Uh, Megan, your new book is called Science for Her, and it's kind of a combo, uh, like science textbook and women's magazine. So we thought that maybe the perfect game to play would be Mary Boff Kill Scientist Edition. Love it. With you. We have to say Boff because we swore too much a couple shows ago, and we got dropped by the station in Yuma, Arizona. Oh, my God. 
God. That is a Wait, I'm only doing this story. to reach you mites. Yeah. So I'm very disappointed. <laughs> it's their loss. All right, so Mary Boff Kill. I want to swear so bad now. Scientist I- edition. Um, we have a few different categories. Uh, let's start with uh, electricity. And uh, because you're a woman, we've also made you a card with the names on there so you can remember them. Is this um, like a hat? Yeah. This is a cute hat. Okay, so in the electricity department, Mary Boff Kill, Nikola Tesla, Thomas Edison, or Ben Franklin? Okay, I'm gonna boff Nikola Tesla. Um, he sounds like he sounds like a like a hot mariachi band member. So I think he has. That might a lot be the of... only time those words have ever been put in that order. <laughs> like I imagine he has like deep red and black leggings. Okay. Um, so he sounds really sexy. Yeah, I think he was Russian. That's very sexy. Mm. <laughs> I just I see a bunch of letters together in Nikola Tesla that I don't usually see in English, so that's all I see. Mm-hmm. Sounds very foreign. Okay, um, so that's you said boff. Yes, boff. I'm gonna kill Thomas Edison Ooh. Um, because, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Some group has an agenda here. Yeah. <laughs> they came. They're like, you know what? Yeah. The Wizard of Menlo Park had it too good. Yes. Let's take him down a notch. Um, as all women know, lights are really bad because they show all your problem areas. So I think Culture that, body. Yeah. Um, I think that lights are maybe the worst invention that have ever been made for women. Okay. So that's why I'm killing Thomas Edison. And I'm going right. to marry Ben Franklin um, because he has lots of kites. <laughs> they sound fun. Okay. Good. Excellent. Those were all the right answers, surprisingly. <laughs> Uh, next up, Mary Boff Kill in the psychology category, uh, Sigmund Freud, Dr. Phil, and Carl Jung. Um, well, I'm definitely going to... Some people apparently boffed Carl Jung, and they're, really... <laughs> they're in the audience. I really want to have a lot of talks with individuals about <laughs> science, their science background after this. I'm going to boff Sigmund Freud, because I feel like he's going to cry a lot, um, and... <laughs> call me mommy and stuff and it would be super hilarious to see it truly how crazy um now i'm gonna marry dr phil because i want to change my last name to phil um (laughs) i have always loved thinking his name is like dr john phil (laughs) and then i guess what's the um, Uh, kill kill, oh well i'm gonna kill carl jung which uh i don't oh Stop. <laughs> um, he uh, just really hasn't added any. I mean, he never calls me. Yeah. He's like not very nice to me. What have you done for me lately? Yeah. So he occasionally kill him. tells you your tweets aren't as great as they could have been. Yeah, he's always that guy tweeting back at me, being like, "Eh, six out of ten. <laughs> so okay, um, those were the wrong answers, by the way. Um, but that's all right. Uh, one more. Uh, let's see. Do you want rock star scientists or potpourri? Oh, my God. Um, this is probably the hardest decision you're going to make uh, in, like, two weeks. I guess potpourri. Potpourri it is. Oh, I thought I was going to get to marry potpourri. <laughs> I thought it was all sense, clove, yeah. We cinnamon. have actually a little yeah. sash yeah. <laughs> in the bathroom oh, in the green room. this is fun. Okay, so potpourri, Mary Boff Kill for Megan Amram, uh, Parks and Rec, and also author of Science for Her. Uh, Mary Boff Kill, Marie Curie, Noam Chomsky, or Charles Darwin. No. And and amazing boff party in a jacuzzi with all of them is not an option. Yeah, I mean... Because I know you're thinking it. I have such a clear vision in my head right now. Um, I think that I'm going to have to kill Marie Curie. Wow. Um, okay. Because she really overstepped her bounds there. Mm-hmm. She took a lot of... I mean, I talk about this in my book. I have a section called Marie Curie versus Marie Claire. Um, I think that um, Marie Curie in like the best lighting was only like a four, um, and that, Edison. And that lighting was, of course, the radiation that gave her cancer and killed right. her or whatever. Okay. Um, so she's got to go. Let's end it on a dark note. Right. Um, lo- love you, babe, but you got to go. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna boff Noam Chomsky because I want him to chomp. Yes, it's great to see you, Noam. Um, <laughs> 
I want him to Chomsky my gnome. Does that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, is that absolutely. anything? Yeah, absolutely. That is a thing. Okay, that's that a thing. Turns out, um, Chomsky her gnome. And then I would like to marry Charles Darwin because I feel like our love will just evolve and get better over time. I got... <laughs> And that is how you play Mary Boff Kill Scientist Edition with Megan Amram. Megan, thank you so much. Thank you.